With David and Jonathan this week as a BBC commentator and fishing fan who has one of the country's largest collections of trout photos. Even John Motson turns down his invitations to dinner. <laughs> Tony Gubber. <laughs> With Gary and Rory this week is the skipper of the first all-female crew to sail around the world covering 48,000 miles inside 80 days. It's only 24,000 miles around the world, but that'll teach them to have a female navigator. <laughs> Tracy Edwards, MBE. The first and third of many. We get things moving with our excuses round. Gary, Rory and Tracy. It's Colombia's former Newcastle striker, Faustino Aspria. Albert. Here's Aspria. That is 1-0. Aspria. Now, Aspria was set to make a dramatic return to English football last month after he agreed to join 3rd Division Darlington. However, at the time of the press conference announcing his signing, he was spotted on his way to the airport. So what reason did he have for not wanting to stay in Darlington, Gary's team? Thank you so much. A great thrill it is to have a proper sportsman, sportswoman on the show. <laughs> Thank you. Tracy was MBE. So tell me, 11 women on the same boat. Yeah. That is fantastic. It's isn't scary, it? isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you had no men? No. For, for a whole year? Well, we didn't have any on the boat, no. Oh, right. <laughs> and you came back to a hero's welcome. Yep. And a mountain of ironing. <laughs> <laughs> this is Rory trying to get off with you, by the way. <laughs> Questions, I'll ask you this is the most die. charming I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> but Addie, serious question, I'll ask you before Jonathan does, <laughs> and, probably, and probably less graphically. Um, how do you, you know, how do you manage for, you know, you know? <laughs> you know, when you got your MBE, are these the sort of questions that the Queen asked? <laughs> asked me exactly the same Did thing. Did you really? Yeah, exactly the same thing. So, what are we talking about? Uh, Fastino Aspria. Was it um, language difficulties? because they can't speak English in Darlington. <laughs> the money thing, wasn't it? I mean, he, he said he couldn't live on 10, 20, 17, 15, 17. I'll give you three points that for that. Well done, Gary. In <laughs> yes, the reason he gave was that he couldn't afford to play for the team. He said that the £17,000 a week he was being offered was very good, but it wasn't enough to live in Darlington. <laughs> Aspria's other excuse for not signing his contract was that he was bewildered by jet lag because, of course, when it's six o'clock in Colombia, it's 1973 in Darlington. <laughs> David, Jonathan and Tony, it's that ginger-haired, cupboard-loving German for you, Boris Becker. That's it. He's done it. Now, in the early 90s, Boris Becker forsook the linen cupboard for a slightly more spacious attic owned by his sister in Munich. But what was his reason for wanting to hide in an attic, David's team? You welcome Tracy to the show. Let's welcome Tony to the show, because I am, frankly, very, very excited about having one of the BBC's trio of world-class commentators on the show. Tony, welcome to the show, because, you know, you might know this, but the BBC, they have pet names for their commentators here. Motson course, the great Motson, they call the maestro, I believe. Is that right? Correct, yeah, it's true. Yeah. The voice. Yeah. The voice, yeah. Uh, Barry Davis, I believe they call him the governor. <laughs> <laughs> they, they do and Among other things. Yeah. <laughs> and Tony, they call when the other two aren't available. So you see... <laughs> it's it's an honour to have you here. And we're proud. Very nice of you to point it out. Thank yeah, you very well, much <laughs> Can I just tell everyone, I am not the football commentator who went to Israel to do a match and began by saying, welcome to Tel Aviv, a real mecca for tourists. <laughs> <laughs> and I saw you two chatting early on, and I'm assuming you were talking about commentating tips and so on, and I thought it was a scene out of the new Harry Potter's movie. Look at them, like a couple of people in Gringotts Bank. <laughs> Well, can I just say, Jonathan, from our, from our point of view, looking at you three, it looks like one of those hair transplant adverts, you know. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> before, before, during and after. <laughs> but it is lovely to have you on the show as well, Tracy. Thank you, Jonathan. Don't do that. <laughs> Save that for later. Leave her alone, Jonathan. She's ours. Because you're not only round the world, lady, but also 
Didn't you break the cross-channel crossing speed as well? Didn't you do that to farm some back? Yeah, we just broke uh, four world records, actually, wow, for Britain. Oh. <laughs> and would I be right? And with my limited knowledge of things <laughs> nautical, would I be right in thinking that it's quicker going to France than coming back because you're weighed down with all the fags and the booze and <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. for personal use? Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. What are we talking about? We're talking about um, that German show? bloke. German. Yes, Boris Becker. Oh, yeah. Was some rich German <laughs> lagging his loft with tennis players? <laughs> 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 It's just a thought. In which case, you should have gone for the top of the range model, the Sampras, which has, a, as you know, a higher TOG rating. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe the McGrath. That's been wrapped around a few old boilers, hasn't it? Worth waiting for. Worth waiting for. Worth for. Well done. Well worth. David, did you take on the um, Countryside Alliance march? Did you? Were you marching? No, I sent sent the staff up. <laughs> That's why there were 400,000. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but that must have been a big day for you, the, uh, the Country Alliance March thingy, Roy. All those farms left unguarded. No wonder you look tired. <laughs> <laughs> was he up there because... Was it something to do with the inland revenue or tax evasion or...? Yeah, yeah. I'll give you three points for that, Tony. Yeah. Thank you very much. Is that what it was? <laughs> Yes, according to the prosecutors in the investigation into Boris Becker's financial affairs, he was hiding in his sister's attic to avoid paying tax when he claimed to be living in the luxury tax haven of Monte Carlo. Becker's not the only top sportsman to have pulled this stunt. There are rumours that one unnamed, Leicester-born, crisp-flogging, jug-eared goal hanger <laughs> pretended to have been injured in Japan when he actually spent two years in a gimp mask in Mark Lawrence's cellar. <laughs> Becker is a keen environmentalist who's raised many thousands of pounds to save the rainforest. He's keen to maintain a natural habitat for when Pete Sampras is released back into the wild. <laughs> and at the end of that round, David's team have three points and Gary's team have three points. And two finds us asking the question, what's going on, Gary's team? Have a look at this. So, what was that all about, Gary's team? Before we go, can we just see that again? Before we do, can you just turn your back to the audience? Yeah, 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 the, yeah, 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 I know. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. What were you doing there? <laughs> I told my wife I nipped out for the papers. <laughs> <laughs> was it the first crossing of David Gower's moat? <laughs> Now, what's the name of the rower there? Deborah Veal. Deborah Veal. Now, apparently she rode naked. Is that true? That she did. Um, she did row um, part of the way naked mm. when it was warm enough, obviously. Is this something that you, you know, long-distance yachts women do then? If it's sunny enough, yeah, we tend to take all our clothes off. Yeah. All eleven of you. Yeah. God, I want to be on that boat. <laughs> I'd, I'd be a single-handed yachtsman. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Tracy. <laughs> but the big question is, and this is an important question, did you all menstruate together in the Spurs dressing room, Gary? <laughs> is it not really boring, though? It, On well, a boat no, for ages and no, ages it's and ages. It's, it's, well, it's a just test a of your stamina and courage, and it's a challenge to be met and mastered. Stamina, yeah, it's Gary. Yeah, but stamina and courage, <laughs> alien terms to Gary. <laughs> <laughs> just see Gary standing at the port as they come in going, they've invented planes! <laughs> Gary's gone for like the wimp tattoos, like they're on the shirt sleeves. <laughs> this is a sleeveless shirt. <laughs> but look shirt. at me, I'm hard. Yeah, it's a shirt, Gary. <laughs> How can you talk about anyone's gear? <laughs> Sorry, I think you probably know the answer to this, don't I, you? I do know the Come answer to this. Uh, she rode across the Atlantic with her husband, but halfway across. Um, her husband jumped ship. Don't blame him. And just... <laughs> Stuck alone with your missus for weeks on end. <laughs> and she rode the rest of the way by herself. Is she the correct answer the for three points. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. Yeah. That's a strong one. Yeah. The 
problems in their relationship started the 800th time he said, I spy with my little eye, <laughs> something beginning with S. <laughs> Deborah said her best day at sea was Christmas Day, reading all my Christmas cards from my friends and family in the UK. It may have been her best day, it was a bloody awful day for the postman. <laughs> After three months naked at sea, Deborah had the most tanned arse since Jamie Thixton's last trip to a Soho porn dungeon. <laughs> David's team, you might recognise this chap. Just be careful, Carmelo, for it's 25 years of my life in this touch. So... How did Mark Lawrenson find himself in such a position? Just, just want to ask Gary, was that an emotional moment for you watching that come off? It must be like an old friend that you're losing as well. <laughs> Why do you say that, David? Have you not been paying attention to the last 15 <laughs> shows? <where you're> <laughs> 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 no. Have you worked with uh, Mr Lawrenson, Tony? I have, yeah, for several years. Yeah. How do you rate him as a commentator, as a pundit? Excellent. Nice. He's the hardest working of all the commentators, I think. Mike. How hard working would you describe Gary? Lazy. <laughs> nice, isn't it? That's the best you've had, isn't it? Oh, Lazy. Yeah. Take <laughs> I had one once years ago, and when you shave off a moustache, and all the gentlemen in the room will know this, you never shave it straight off without first stopping halfway like it's a little Hitler moustache, just, <laughs> just to see how it looks. You go around like that, going, oi, oi, oi. <laughs> just thinking no one's watching, and then you whip it right off. <laughs> Don't you? That's true. I imagine Lawrenson had the moustache off because it was tickling Gary's tummy. <laughs> <laughs> David, oh, how, no. how often do you gut the barbers? Uh, oh, twice a month. Yeah? Once to take it in, once to pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to admire his honesty. <laughs> hey. You know, Rory has no such problem with the facial. I saw him with a goatee once. He was leading it into a hotel room. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <went> dear. <laughs> it was because he'd said that Bolton would get relegated at the end of the season and of course they didn't and he threatened that if they did stay up he would shave his moustache off and at last the voice of sanity Sam three Allardyce. points thank, thank you, you. <laughs> Bolton's survival meant that Leicester City were relegated in their place Gary of course was utterly heartbroken he adored that moustache <laughs> Sky TV's Richard Keyes also agreed to a complete shave if Bolton stayed up. The bet was called off halfway when the strimmer ran out of paraffin. <laughs> and the scores at the end of that round are David's team with six points and Gary's team with six points. For our sporting bluff round, Gary's team, it's that serial house hunter, Rio Ferdinand. Beckham with the corner. And Ferdinand coming in there. And Michael Hurd's oh, in. It's a goal. Ferdinand got the header. And England are in front after only five minutes. When Rio Ferdinand was a little boy, he wanted to be a vet. When Rio Ferdinand was a little boy, he wanted to be a Formula One driver. When Rio Ferdinand was a little boy, he wanted to be a ballet dancer. <coughs> and Tracy, mm -hmm. when, you were, when you were a little girl, what did you want to be? When you I actually wanted to be a ballet dancer. Oh, really? Yeah. Huh? Yeah, I went to ballet school and... And what made you give it up? I was expelled. Oh, well, what did you get expelled for? Stealing cars, actually. Stealing cars? Oh, yeah. You got expelled from a ballet school for stealing cars? <laughs> oh, yeah, you obviously weren't cut out for ballet, were you? <laughs> <laughs> what did you want to be when you were a little girl, Gary? <laughs> <laughs> and what, was, what was the first one, Teddy? What was yours? Uh, a vet. Too many vet programs on television. Uh, animal hospital and pet rescue. Maybe they could combine them and you could have Jamie Oliver working with Rolf Harris and they could do um, Rolf and Jamie's animal kitchen. <laughs> Here's an injured bird, but I'm going to walk it up for you. <laughs> hey, pucker. <laughs> That's a good impersonation. Uh, I think I know what this is. Come on, Gary. Get a move on then, Gary. Oh, it's definitely a ballet. So you think that ballet. Jonathan was telling yeah. the truth? Let's see if you're right. <laughs> Yes, Jonathan was correct. Rio actually spent his first five years of education in ballet school. Man United have had a shaky start in the Premiership, but they'll be fine now. Diego Forlan is on the score sheet. After just 27 games, he's right up there in the scoring charts, alongside Peter Enkelman, the Aston Villa goalkeeper. <laughs>
Rio kept his pair of luxury ballet tights with him for many years. They were especially popular at Leeds, where the other players wore them on their heads so as not to be recognised <laughs> on CCTV. <laughs> Ferdinand's brother Anton was recently in goal at a royal photo call trying to save a penalty from Prince Harry, who was also a member of a famous family, the Hewitts. <laughs> David, Jonathan and Tony, here's the world's most famous basketball team, the Harlem Globetrotters, strutting their stuff. <laughs> Um, well, I can tell you that Pope John Paul II is a member of the Harlem Globetrotters. George Bush is a member of the Harlem Globetrotters. Mike Tyson is a member of the Harlem Globetrotters. The Harlem Globetrotters. <laughs> I used to love them. I used to watch them every time on TV. I thought they were like the best basketball team in the world. And then I found out one day they were just playing like, you know, sad, fat old white guys who'd never picked up a ball before. It was all a big fix. So now I've switched my allegiance to WWF Western. <laughs> <laughs> George W. Bush. What's the W stand for? Is it Wobbert? <laughs> he's an idiot as well, isn't he? At the moment, he thinks, he thinks they're bombing Tyrak. <laughs> well, let's face it, though, they have been responsible for many atrocities over the years. <laughs> Who was the last one? Tyson, Bush, and the Pope. Il Papi. He's John Paul II, isn't he? Mm. Yeah. It's a good name, but I think he should have gone with his first choice, George Ringo I. <laughs> There's a joke that um, David Bowie told me last week. <clears throat> Uh, the, the seven dwarfs go and see the Pope. They push Dopey up to the Pope and he goes, um, well, you're holding this, I'm sorry to have to ask you this, but uh, you, do you, you do have some dwarf nuns, don't you? And I said, no, my son. <laughs> <laughs> we, do, we do not have any of a dwarf nun. That's Afro man, you That's a good I didn't no. know that Joe Dolce was Pope. <laughs> <laughs> no, and Dopey goes again, come on, come on, you're holding this. Tell us, the, no, my son, he says, no. No way do I have any. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have any. <laughs> and all the other dwarfs go, Dopey shake the penguin. <laughs> and David Bowie told me that. <laughs> Imagine me on the boat on a long journey, Tracy. It'd be lovely, wouldn't it? The mind boggles. It's not all that would be boggled if you had none of them. <laughs> See, you'd be begging for land. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, gents. We'd like to go for the Pope. Il Papi. Il Papi. <laughs> OK, so Where, you think... Wherever that, he comes from, You think that Tracy was telling the truth? Let's see if you're right. You can... <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, Tracy spoke the truth. The current Pope is indeed an honorary member of the Harlem Globetrotters. Although the Pope is a member of the Globetrotters, he doesn't play the sport and takes no active part in the games, in much the same way that David was a member of the England cricket team. <laughs> the arrival of a new Pope is heralded by white smoke, just like the arrival of Phil Tufnell into the England dressing room. <laughs> and at the end of that round, David's team have nine points and Gary's team have nine points. Once again, for the regulars to stick out their arms and feel a sportsman, Gary and Rory, could you please take your positions and put on your blindfolds? Okay. And can we have our first mystery oh. guest, please? Time starts now. Oh, now, is this going to be 11 oh. late? Is this going to be... <laughs> Gary. It's home. <laughs> it's your wallet. <laughs> it's... Oh, hello. Hello. <laughs> What's this? Hello. I don't know. I found something. What have you oh. found? It's a wall. <laughs> Excuse me, Posh. Excuse me, Posh. Come on. Oh! Oh! It's it's escaping! <laughs> And now I've worked it out a bit lower, a bit lower. There's <laughs> <laughs> a lift up, will you, Roy? Oh, I think it's the girl. 
Is it? Oh, no. Or it's David Seaman, one of the two. Climbing, climbing. Is it a rock climbing? I'd better rock go up there. Climber. <laughs> Have we guessed it yet? What's your name? <laughs> Lucy Creamer! Lucy too late! Three times British Mountaineering <laughs> Champion, Lucy Creamer! Hello. Oh, you're lovely. Look. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 OK, Jonathan David, if you'd like to take your position. But first of all, you will need these gloves. Ah, to wear. Oh, oh David, you can keep the gloves on a little bit longer than usual for this. We've got 90 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> this could bode well, you know, though. Because, you know, we've had a few complaints when, you know, when Rory goes in a bit too heavy-handed with the ladies. Yeah. <laughs> Rory Maybe. does? Rory. Yeah. This could mean it's Anna Kornikova. <laughs> <laughs> could be Ainsley Harriet with a hot casserole as well, so you might just... Yes, that'd fit into the sports quiz theory, wouldn't it? <laughs> Put them on, don't hurt your arm again. <laughs> You're not going to wear them either. OK, fair enough. We want the fig delay. Yeah. It suits me. No, sorry. If there's something to fill, we want the fig on. Can we have our second mystery Come guest, on. please? Well, love like gardening gods, we need to get to for Christmas and Hi. birthday. <laughs> Time starts I'll now. I don't know what your name is, but you're about to become the most popular woman in Britain. <laughs> What's... Lara. What? <laughs> What's this? What's this? What's this? <laughs> this escape from Mark Lawrenson. <laughs> What is it? Have you, have you struck gold? Is Richard is Gere it? in the building? <laughs> what? What's going on here? Hey, oh. just another one. What are you doing, you Oh! He bit me! I just got bitten! Is it... Is it Frankie the Tory? <laughs> I'm a little thing. Yeah, you can have three points for being bitten. Why don't you give us some <laughs> What have you got? I've, I've got blood coming out of me. That's what I've got. Look at that. <laughs> it's the East Coast Ferret Racing Team. You got me. Imagine I was six inches from suddenly being Jewish. <laughs> you were right. Well, why didn't What's you give us some protective handwear? <laughs> what were you thinking, Hancock? Why didn't you get it? Because Wait, I was in pain and possibly mortal danger. <laughs> Gabba, have you no heart? No. Do you not know I'm a blindfold out there, sitting astride what I believed to be at the time a First World War cannon. Suddenly, <laughs> something, an alien perhaps, might have been from John Hurt's chest, for all I know, leaps out, bites the top of my thumb off. <laughs> and you have the temerity to suggest I could have got us three points. Well, shame on you. <laughs> I gave him three points for being bitten. You gave him three points for being bitten. Oh, come on, it's got to be worth it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's worse. And at the end of that round, Gary seemed to have nine points in James' team. That's that's 12. Yes. Yes. Yeah. We wind up the show by playing the name game. The team in the lead goes first, which oh, is David's you. team. Uh, which Jonathan will be doing the clues, and this week we'd like you to do impressions. <laughs> it'll, it'll My be forte. Your new forte. It'll could I have Nick? Could I have an extra thirty seconds? I'm feeling a bit faint. No. <laughs> bit, I've lost quite a lot of blood. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and the time starts now. Okay. Ooh, it's I've got Pope. a point. Mumsy, bring me some new balls. Ooh, oh, Tim, Tim Henry. Henry. Yes. <laughs> or it's 
Right. Top of the morning to you now. I'm going to play the football, and I would like to Roy kick, King. I'll kick Roy in King. the balls. Roy King. Yeah. Hey, what's the matter? <laughs> there, <I see. laughs> Okay. Hello, <laughs> I'm, I'm a German gentleman. Boris, Boris Becker. Yeah. Boris, yeah. <laughs> Arit man, is, is, I gun over the time, and I gun play yeah, the football. Yes, yes. Paul Gaspar. Ooh, Sven, come back into the sauna. <laughs> I will bend anything you have about you. You're a geller. Wow, look at that. He's been out on a date with him, you know. <laughs> All right, mate. Hello. I'm gonna... Uh, I've been... I'm Where gonna bowl a ball at you in the cricket match. <laughs> Very fast, and then eat some pies, cos I'm a fat cricketer. <laughs> Hello, it's mate. Sh good, sh good on ya. Shane Warne. Shane Warne. Fit, Shane Warne. I'm, I'm a boxer. This is you, then. No, I'm the other one, and I'm, no other I'm one. stuck in the jungle, and I've oh, caught a saw in between the time. Yeah. Oh. Right, OK. Oh, I'm also Irish, and I drive a car very fast. <laughs> oh, look, at a leprechaun. I will not drive over him. I'm driving to the pot of gold, so I am sure it is uh, and it Eddie is. Eddie, Eddie, Eddie. Eddie. <laughs> yeah. Was it not like they were in the room? You see, was it not like they were here? Mm. And <laughs> I think you're fine. I did not stoop to any stereotypes. <laughs> You moved under 22, so 14. Wow, 14? 14. Oh. OK, start, your time. Oh, 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 oh. Now. Cheated, anyway. Uh, I, I, I was sitting on the... I was playing for my old club, the Hammers. Well, I wasn't playing. I, I, was on the, I was on the fence. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> it's a little man, a jockey. I don't know whether he's Irish or Scottish, but uh, it's the way I tell him, like... Frank, Frank Carson. Carson. Well, he... <laughs> And this is a very serious um, manager, Celtic, and he thinks without Martin doubt. Martin O'Neill. Yeah. Um, Better Irish accent then. Um, um, uh, right, I'm John uh, Frankham. <laughs> um, hey, it sure is nice to represent my uh, my country uh, at tennis. Um, I'm wearing the three maple leaves of Great Britain on Greg my. <laughs> Shotland, 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 Shotland is the shysest uh, fishbowl. <laughs> 30 votes. <laughs> uh, I'm a big nosed uh, Essex girl runner, and I suppose I talk like this. Um, well, a bit like Trevor Brookin, actually, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Tracy. <laughs> People think I'm dull because I'm dull. <laughs> Alan Shearer. <laughs> So, 16 points for Gary's team, but the winner this week is the blood-soaked David's team. <laughs> so, our thanks to David, Jonathan and Tony, Gary, Rory and Tracy. We're all off to buy the ferret a pint. <laughs> My name's Nick Hancock. I think it's all over. It is now. To remind you again, nothing is done, it's just on paper to remind you. Later tonight, Jonathan Ross returns and you can spend Friday night with him as he will stay with Glenn and his Dynamite TV movie. But if you stay right there now, then you'll be aboard the Red Dwarf after this indeed on back.